Welcome, 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 YouTube. This is another installment of way too much helmet cam footage off of Aaron's uh, helmet cam, that's me. This is my E36M3 at Lone Star Bash. It's about 210 wheel horsepower, stock drivetrain, SLR kit for angle, BC racing coilovers, so the suspension works. Uh, I have inky wheels with a uh, Nissan pattern, so it's wide body with adapter spacers, and it has 265 scrubbed kendas in the back. So they're almost dead and I put them on this car, otherwise it wouldn't spin 265s too easily. And we're chasing down Zach Mitchmore in a 420 wheel SR20 S13. He's a fantastic driver. I don't know how I'm keeping up on this lap. He probably has dead tires or something. But you're gonna see, I'm gonna have to drive this car. I'm cutting track right now, jumping on, doing everything I can to catch these fast cars down the straight. And now we have a couple car lengths between us. I have to reel them in, which is I'm looking at his front tire, his front bumper right now, trying to cut his line by just a couple of feet, match him as well as I can. I'm matching him pretty well right now. Transition at the exact same time as him. Stuff it back in there because his car is really fast and he's a really fast driver. I angle stall it just a little tiny bit right there. And here we go, not too bad of a lap. That worked out pretty well. It's not always gonna work out well, by the way. I just kind of put the best laps at the beginning, probably. The power of editing magic. All right, here comes a 370Z. This car is a bit faster than me. You can see him pull a little bit down the straight, but I kind of jumped him on the run-up. Um, again, he's a really smooth driver, and the Z's are really smooth, especially with Wise Fab and stuff on them a lot of the time. So it's a good car to follow. I do, do need to make sure that I always leave enough space that if he messes up, that I don't hit him, because that is a nicer, newer car. So I don't want to get too, ooh, like that. So I don't want to get too close, just in case he has uh, a bobble or something like that. If somebody misshifts slightly or something, and you're six inches from them, you're going to hit them. But typically, it's a pretty small um, rate of deceleration for them, so it's going to be a bump. So if you're one foot away and something happens, you're just going to bump them because there's not going to be a lot of difference in your speed. But if you guys are 10 car lengths away and the guy messes up and spins and then you hit him, there can be a huge rate of deceleration and a big disaster. Here you can see I'm cutting JR's line. He also has a 420 wheel SR20. About the only two SR20s left in Lone Star Drift, it feels like. Um, I'm doing a pretty good job following him. I'm not sure why. His car should be way faster. I strained out here a little bit. That's okay. I'd rather strain out um, and keep up and do it smoothly than try to force the car to stay in drift when it doesn't want to because it's running out of power. Of course, this car does not have a lot of power and this is a big track. We're entering it probably, I don't know, 90 miles an hour. And that sweeper is probably like 60 and then decelerates down to about 45. Now, you'll see a lot of the time too, the lead car is gonna be doing an e-brake entry. I will typically do a clutch kick entry and then I'll immediately jab the e-brake to get the amount of angle I want and match them. But if I decelerate with an e-brake entry, um, ooh, man, this is sketchy. I, I stay in it though, wow. I'm always watching this video afterwards and you're like, Aaron, you're an idiot. But there's oftentimes a car behind me and sometimes in this video, you're, I think I watched some of the clips already, you're gonna see me get bumped a couple times. You know, if the car in front of me bobbles, the car behind me is gonna hit me. So I wanna bobble as little as possible for the car behind me. Ooh, this is a nice lap, look at this. A 350Z DE, oh no, he's too shallow. Now he's so shallow that doesn't allow me to cut his line by a few feet, which puts me a little bit behind him, but it's still pretty good. Pretty good transition, but I have to straighten out for just a split second. He has an e-brake right there. Now ideally, I would just be driving the car, and as I get close to the people and do all these things, I'm just going to um, do a little bit of left foot braking, but that does not always work out. People are messaging me on Facebook Messenger, so I'm gonna jump out, get back into this. Now Jason's car is really fast. This is Jason Stacy. His car is about a 500 horsepower 2JZ with a diesel turbo on it. Ooh, his front tires are scrubbing oddly a little bit. Makes it a little bit hard to read the car. But yeah, this car is a rocket ship. It's faster than my V8 car even. Uh, I'm speaking fast. I do not have ADD and I have not taken some type of medication for that. I'm just excited talking to you guys. Now, you can always kind of catch up a fast, like to a faster car and track because you do have a couple options. You can run up, try to run up next to them down the straight. You can cut their line. You can enter later than them. 
You can do a lot of different things to try and catch them. You can run less angle. I don't know if I said that already. Ooh, there we go. I, I kind of washed out there trying to catch a faster car that has more grip. Jump back in it, cut his line a bit, it, a little bit. Ooh, man, that is a full like sudden second of straight, and that's not good. Now the the magic of this car and the reason I'm driving it so much is it gets so many laps to a set of tires compared to my V8 car. It was going through a full tank of gas for a set of scrubs at Lone Star Bash. I'm not sure why that is. We think it might be because we're heat cycling the tires, getting them kind of hard, and then taking them off, letting them completely cool down, and putting them on this car. There's always a bunch of black magic to this, and we don't know why, but sometimes you just get in a groove and your tires last way longer than they should. And that's one of these days. So I'm getting, I brought two cars out. I'm gonna have two videos of helmet cam, one with a V8 car, one with this. And uh, this car is just really, really fun to drive and it's fun to struggle. Because my other car is actually faster than most of these cars, which means I'm just driving up to them, down the straight next to them, entering, left foot braking a little bit, just doing my shifts, e-braking a little bit and like everything's great. It's easy to chase people down and do great. But, uh, this is pretty hard sometimes in a slow car. This car has half the horsepower of some of these other cars. That outside one might be beat, but I, I got a little bit too much air out of it. <laughs> it's like squishy on the ground, like flat. But I think it'll be a good. Okay. Ready? Check it or anything? I think you're leading now. Yeah. You want to check it or anything? Sure. like 11. Okay, he's fine. Going down in air pressure didn't really help. Jason's car is still faster and I'm doing my best to chase him down. This is really good practice though because you can't make a lot of mistakes in a car like this. You have to be on point. Ooh, that was a fairly good transition timing but still just trying so hard to catch up. Once we're in this section right here, I'm cutting his line a little bit. It's easy to stay close to a car and then really tight stuff. This is Reed in his dad's KA turbo car. Reed's a great driver and it's really cool that he's been driving with us so long. He used to come out and play around in his Miata when he was 14 years old and his dad would let him drive his car a bit. It's awesome to see him still driving. Ooh, he misshifted, that was sketchy. I could have edited that out, but I just left it in so you guys could see what it's like when someone misshifts. Uh, if I was right on his door, which I have been when he's misshifted or other people have been, you just kind of get tapped a little bit. But if you have a super nice car with, you know, like zip tied on side skirts, those side skirts are probably coming off. This is Jake Wise in front of me. It's a 350Z uh, DE, which means it's a 2003 to 2005 350Z. So it makes, I think his makes 310 wheel because it is modified and has wise fab. Ooh, we're a mess here. Complete mess. You can see a lot of steering correction in my steering work. And this car has a really big angle kit, so that much steering correction is a lot translated down to the ground. Here we're actually not too far off on speed somehow down the straight. I don't know what's up with that. Oh, his car reacted a little weirdly and mine did as well. And you can see how much of a gap he pulled all at once. It was literally like five or six car lengths in less than one second because my car decelerated so quickly. Now we're both a mess again. Even if we're a mess, I kind of stay in it a lot of the time just because it's good practice to catch up and do all these things. When you're first learning to drift and you make big mistakes, I would stop drifting on that lap and go back in and take another lap. There's no reason just to burn off your tires for no reason. But in tandem like this, especially since there can be people behind us, I stay in it as best I can. This is really smooth between these two cars. You can see when it looks like the lead car is just solid in your frame and not moving, it's really, oh, never mind, he drove off track. Mm -hmm. 
にオン
Another problem with a fast car like this, I can try and enter later than him to have a little bit more speed than I normally would to catch up, to do all these things. However, when I do that, I have the potential to just like fly off track because I'm going a little bit faster than I should. Uh, so everything's a give and take. If you clutch kick for entry, you know that's an accelerating technique. If you e-brake for entry, that's a decelerating technique. If I enter later, I'll be going faster. If I enter earlier, I'll be going slower. So I need to figure out what I can do to mimic his speed as well as possible, which means I actually have to try and go faster than him at the very end of the track if I want to catch up or drive farther into the corner. The problem being is, is he's decelerating at that point and I'm accelerating or at least carrying a bunch of speed. And it, it gets to be a little bit of a disaster. Up oh, here, I just jump right into tandem. It's okay with these guys because they know I'm coming because I've been tandem with them all day. Do not just jump in with people on tandem though. This is Bash. I know these guys super well. Don't do what Aaron does. My tires were a little bit cooked there also. From just coming off track, I didn't give them a chance to cool down. That's why I kind of pushed out there a little bit. You can see Jason and I's cars don't flow very well together either, but he's still really fun to drift with. These cars are just very different. Hold track for a second. This is the nice thing about not having body kits on your car. I, I can move a barrier on track just by bumping it with my car, which is awesome. Everybody ready? I am playing lifeguard the entire time we do this as well. I'm watching the track, I'm get, like pulling cars off track as they break down, moving cones, moving barriers, but I'm also tandeming, having a great time and controlling track flow. There you can see I entered later than him and went slightly farther into the track, but now I'm washing out. He has more grip in the back of his car. Pretty good transition there for what I was given. I gave that to myself, by the way. Fun fact, his wheels and the shutter speed on my GoPro, they're kind of like not blurring. I should have an ND filter on my GoPro, which is a neutral density filter which cuts out some light and then his wheels will blur better and look better and the whole thing will look more fluid, but I'm not worried about that. I had a really bad run up on that one. So all we can do now is try and reel him in. We're not gaining any ground on him yet. Now we're gaining a little bit of ground. It's all gonna be in this transition. I don't have the power necessarily to do that transition quite right, so we straighten out up. Oh no, I saw some fiberglass or something fly somewhere. Um, with a little bit more power, that transition would be a little bit better. I would straighten out a little bit less, but it's okay, I want as much forward grip um, pushing the car forward. So again, if I were to e-brake or something to keep the car in drift right there, he would just completely pull away from me. So I want to be as smooth as possible, which requires me to straighten out a little bit. Uh-oh, Michael Van Schellenbeck's coming out. Michael has a 600 and something horsepower. M50, I think it is. Or M52, it's probably an M50. Uh, actually, I have no idea what it is. Uh, E36. Trying my hardest. His car is so much faster, though. That was probably with him waiting for me as well. Not too much I can do there to catch up. You can see I'm running way less angle than him. Cut his line up a little bit there. My transition's way late. Oh, you see parts fly off his car. I don't know if you can see on the wall. Rewind 10 seconds and watch that again. That's good. We can almost always catch somebody by the very end, but it doesn't mean we're anywhere near him at the beginning or middle. 
Uh oh, if you look at my rear, mirror, rear view mirror, you can see Michael chasing me down. He is gonna bully me this bully me this lap, I remember this. Boom. Boom. Oh! Huge smash there. He did not get out of the way for that transition. He got really greedy. If this was a competition, I would have just won because of his greediness. <laughs> There's something to be said for driving a slow car fast, by the way, and just like wringing its neck out. It is so much fun. This car is really, really fun. I absolutely recommend E36 M3s. His car is so fast, I wave him by, and he can actually pass me on the straight <laughs> with me being full throttle. There is a video of me driving that blue car with the hand mobility stuff for the clutch and everything. You operate the clutch on that car on the e-brake and on also on the shifter. You can see him, if you looked inside of his window right there, you can see him squeezing the shifter as he makes his shift, and that is operating the clutch and the shifter at the same time. This is me just being a jackass in grid. We're having fun. That is what drifting is, fun. against Jake Wise, the Wise Fab. Oh, I never made that connection. 350Z. Every mistake I make, by the way, slows us down. So remember that. You have to eliminate as many steering inputs as possible and as many footwork things as possible. You have to eliminate as many e-brake pulls as possible. He's a great driver, by the way, so it's really fun to drive with this guy. Look at all that angle. We just drive by him. <laughs> all right, this is Shannon's car. Shannon has a really similar car to mine, except it's probably about 100 pounds lighter, I would guess, or 200 pounds lighter. But Shannon's car is literally faster than mine, and I don't know what's up with that. It bugs me a little bit. It's an S52 E36, and you can see him just like roll out on me a little bit. I did give him space probably just a little bit so I didn't hit his car. I try to be careful. He's going really wide right here too. You don't want to go that wide. He's really coming along as a driver though. Really fast. These seat time cars allow drivers to do that as well. Uh, working with both a simulator and then a seat time car. A, a seat time car is basically a car that you can get as many laps in as possible that doesn't require you to like pull over and cool down. This is just a stock radiator car and I don't cool it down one bit. It's perfectly fine. The only thing I need to do is cool down the tires and I don't even do that. All right, this is a good example of me falling behind his car. Whoops, I just broke something. Um, my car didn't have enough grip because the back tires were worn out. So you could see my line slowly slipping wider and wider and wider compared to his, and my car would not dig in. So, something to think about. Be careful when your tires are getting overheated. What? Look at that BC okay. racing hat. Okay. That's so cool how they put the fabric on the inside. Um, <laughs> It's really funny, I've been wearing big hats forever, and I requested uh, some BC racing oh hats like God. that. They started making them because I was wearing them all the time. It makes me feel special, and then I got some free ones from them. Just like all the t-shirts I wear, I try to get sponsor stuff to like round out my wardrobe. And my running joke is, I still need pants. So I wish some of my sponsors would make pants. This is pretty nice. I'm not mad at this lap, not at all. Oh, but I run up on the inside of him a little bit. 
That was a big correction on my part. You shouldn't run up in front of him like that. You should run up on his door. Your front wheel should maybe be like a foot or two behind his rear wheel, um, all the way back to maybe a foot or two in front of his back wheel. So you kind of have like a space from his front fender to his door. Look at this. This Mustang and that Corvette are so much faster than my car, it's ridiculous. The Mustang does have a built motor supposedly and makes about 500 horsepower. And that Corvette is just a Corvette. The Corvette makes probably, I would assume 400 horsepower at the crank. All right, and we're gonna have one more clip after this. We are at the end. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to all the sponsors. Thank you to everyone that supports Lone Star Drift. Thank you to mostly though the spectators. Without spectators and drivers, no wait, I think, thank the drivers the most. I think the drivers have way more effort into it than the spectators. Uh, thank you everybody that comes out and drives with us. I love drifting. I have so much fun with it. I really appreciate everybody making it possible for all of us to do this. Without the drivers and just everybody coming out and staying interested in Lone Star Drift, we simply couldn't do it and I would have to quit drifting. So thank you very much. I couldn't do it without you guys. Thank you to the sponsors as well. Thank you to every sponsor we work with. Have a great night. Hope you guys enjoyed this. I have another one of these videos I'm going to make with the V8 car next because I had two cars at Bash. Goodbye.